Okay, so we are back again with the Fisher Carbon Arc Lamp, and I've done a little bit of work to it, um, a lot, tried aligning it a little bit better, and, well, you can't see it right now. Um, apologize for the dust on the lens. Come on. All right. Um, anyway, yeah, the two carbons on the right or the left are the ones that were in the lamp when I got it, and they seem to be a soft cord type of carbon, whether they're an actual lamp carbon or if they're a welding carbon, I don't know. The two on the right are two of the ones that I pulled out of. Whoops pulled out of the battery. Um, we're going to be doing two tests here. Now I also have it wired directly to AC. I don't have, well, through the rectifier, but I have it, I don't have it going through that little switch that I have. Um, it's going just straight into an outlet. So if the rectifier shorts, we're going to blow a fuse. Well, we would anyway, because that switch doesn't have fuses in it anymore. But, anyway, yeah, let's get going. We're going to first try and view the arc through a 760 nanometer infrared lens filter. And um, we'll see what we get out of that. And if that doesn't produce... Well, if or if not... I just want to see what happens when we do. But after we run it with that, we'll run it through with the welding glass again and see how that goes. So the filter is on. Hopefully the focus stays in focus. Let's go. Now, as you can see, the two carbons on the left have a much more stable arc than the two on the right. Uh, let's switch polarity here. With the other, with the other four carbons, it seemed to work better the way that it's set up now. Um, I had switch I switch the polarity back and forth every once in a while to try to equalize out the carbons and since this isn't a polarity based lamp um, but the the you can tell that the other the carbons that were in the lamp burn a lot smoother than the ones that were uh, that I got out of that battery and all that that black well, okay, hold on. All this black gunk in the bottom of the um, bottom of the lamp actually came out of the carbons from the battery. So it seems like there was some kind of asphalt or tar sort of seal, and that had soaked into the carbon. So they're probably not actually pure. I've noticed also we're getting a little bit of what looks to be molten zinc coming out, like flaking off of the carbon, so that's probably, might need to um, boil them or something, oh, well that probably wouldn't even get it out, but anyway, yeah, try number two going in the opposite polarity. As you can see that the left hand side has a much smoother arc 
Well, I hope you can see anyway. Don't know if this is even gonna focus or not. This is with infrared, so... Yeah, I found out the easiest way to turn this lamp off is to just blow it out. All right, so there we go. That was with infrared. We'll see if we can use welding glass here and actually be able to focus on it maybe. Um, to be quite honest, I don't know if this camera even has a manual focus. We'll be right back and I'm going to see if it does that and I'll see if I can fix the focus and um, that'll be a little bit better. Alright, so I have it set on manual focus now. Um, let's try the infrared filter again. Uh, whether this is actually in focus or not, I don't know. I'm just going by sight because the it's a little tricky because I have a wide angle lens on it. Normally I wouldn't in this case, but the wide angle lens is the size to hold the infrared filter. So anyway, let's go. So let's try the welding glass. So we keep losing the arc because the instability of the battery carbons. Most likely due to impurities that have seeped out of the uh, electrolyte of the battery. It is mu running much better now. What I have to do is get some actual lamp carbons or welding carbons that will actually burn smoothly like the ones on the left. Alright, so what we're going to do now is turn the camera around, shut the lights out, and just give an idea of how much light this thing actually puts out. Lights out. Not really in focus. I'm not trying to focus on anything in particular because we're still in manual focus, but anyway, here we go. And the carbons start a lot better when they're already warm. And they burn a lot better once they're, well, the battery carbons anyway, burn a lot better once they have already heated up. <laughs> All right, that's enough. Hmm. There we go. All right, so there we have it. Nineteen... I don't know, I would have to say this is from the, um... 30s or 40s, probably. 
I don't think it's from the 1920s. Haven't found much information on it on the internet outside of what outside of the um, modified one that I mentioned in the last video which is I believe it was on Etsy but yeah if anybody has any information about the approximate year of this lamp it looks almost as though it possibly is supposed to have a lens in front of it just due to the fact that it has these little tabs here I'm not sure what they would be for because like I said this thing had a mount like a floor stand mount for it originally and um, it would be neat if I could somehow rig up some sort of reflector but being that it's a twin twin carbon and the way that the electrodes are set up in there I don't think that's going to be possible to make it actually into a spotlight but who knows we'll play with it again some other time um, but yeah thanks for watching